ಓತಸ್ಸ ಭಗವತೋ ಅರ್ಹತೋ ಸಮ್ಮ ಸಂಬುದ್ಧಸ್ಸ ನಮೋ ತಸ್ಸ ಭಗವತೋ ಅರ್ಹತೋ ಸಮ್ಮ ಸಂಬುದ್ಧಸ್ಸ ನಮೋ ತಸ್ಸ ಭಗವತೋ ಅರ್ಹತೋ ಸಮ್ಮ ಸಂಬುದ್ಧಸ್ ಸಾಧು ಸಾಧು ಸೊ ಟುಡೇ ಸುತ ಇಸ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ಅಂಗೂತ್ರ ನಿಕಾಯ ದ ನೇಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸುತ ಇಸ್ ವಿಸ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದ ಅಂಗೂತ್ರ ನಿಕಾಯ ಬುಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೆನ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ತ್ರೀ so uh, it starts as bikkhus there are these ten things which are wished for desired agreeable rarely gained in the world what ten one wealth is wished for desired agreeable and rarely gained in the world beauty is wished for desired agreeable and rarely gained in the world health is wished for desired agreeable and rarely gained in the world virtuous behavior is wished for desired agreeable and rarely gained in the world celibacy is wished for desired agreeable and rarely gained in the world friends is wished for desired agreeable and rarely gained in the world learning is wished for desired agreeable and rarely gained in the world wisdom is wished for desired uh, agreeable and rarely gained in the world good qualities is wished for desired agreeable and rarely gained in the world the heavens are wished for desired agreeable and rarely gained in the world so as you can see that uh, the 10 uh, things which the buddha is uh, talking about uh, is uh, has certain things which uh, a monk would not uh, basically desire which is kind of beauty is there or uh, health is there uh so uh, or the heavens uh, uh, a monk is not even supposed to kind of uh, wish for uh, heavens because he is uh, uh, here to uh, to understand how the mind is working how uh, uh, the uh, uh, mind is functioning and the, by that uh, kind of getting uh, kind of free of this cycle so these are uh, the uh, things which are there there are certain uh, uh, things which are overlapping or uh, with the uh, with the monks which is uh, virtuous behavior is there celibacy is there in buddha's teaching and many of the suttas uh, he has mentioned uh, that uh, kind of praise celibacy that he has mentioned certain uh, uh, when the, the, it was not a buddha sasana means it was not a time of the buddha's teaching where uh, there were ascetics uh, who, who used to have families but they used to only have one child to kind of uh, 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 take their name forward but they would uh, not engage in uh, any kind of uh, sexual act- activity after their first uh, child is born so that is also a way of uh, living a life so celibacy is one of the things which uh, is kind of praised by uh, the buddha and uh, uh, one of the things which is kind of he is mentioning that it is rare, rare uh, uh, for uh, people to achieve so there are uh, we can go forward there are these 10 things which are wished for desired agreeable and rarely gained in the world there are uh, 10 other things but those that are obstruction to these 10 things which are wished for desired agreeable and rarely gained in the world so uh, now the buddha is talking about the hindrances which are there to uh, uh, get uh, what you want indolence and lack of initiative are obstruction to the acquisition of wealth indolence is laziness and lack, lack of initiative uh, so uh, one of the things i uh, have read uh, uh, separately is that uh, when uh, somebody is trying to kind of build a business Uh, he has to understand that there are kind of a lot of uh, things uh, uh, which can fail and uh, uh, there are a, a, a initiative which the person has to take and then ha- they have to be uh, constantly putting in effort when you are uh, uh, in the pursuit of wealth then you have to constantly uh, be uh, in effort and also uh, how uh, you have to take initiatives to kind of gain wealth not adorning and beautifying oneself are obstruction to beauty so this is kind of self evident uh, if uh, somebody wants to be beautiful then they have to kind of uh, exercise and uh, uh, beautify uh, oneself doing what is unbeneficial is an obstruction to health 
So this is the major things which we uh, kind of face in uh, the, our life is uh, how to improve our health. So uh, when uh, there are a certain uh, uh, things which are kind of harmful, like uh, in current uh, wisdom, they say sugar is harmful and uh, 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 processed foods are harmful. So those kind of things uh, a person kind of uh, understands that what are the things uh, which are required, which are uh, things which are unbeneficial. So that uh, will kind of become uh, to avoid those things and uh, by avoiding uh, you gain health. Bad friendship is an obstruction to virtuous behavior. Now, this is also an important thing uh, saying that uh, for virtuous be be behavior, that is Sheila, uh, Buddha is saying that you should have a good friends. In one other sutta also, we had mentioned that uh, not having good friends, they uh, don't hear the good dhamma. Not hearing the good dhamma, they don't uh, uh, understand uh, where to put attention. And then it leads to uh, the ignorance. The, the, uh, there is another sutta in Angutra Nika, which I had taken up. So that in the same way, uh, by having a good uh, kind of a friendship or having a good uh, company, you uh, enhance your uh, good uh, behavior. non restraint in the sense fa fa faculties is an obstruction to celibacy. So uh, how, where you put your attention is again important. Or here in uh, all those uh, previous things also, where you are putting your attention and and you, you, you're you using the right effort, right? The effort in six are like uh, uh, recognizing that uh, uh, where your attention is, there is unbeneficial, then releasing it, relaxing, smiling, and returning back to uh, what your task is there. So that right effort, which is there, is there in this thing also that you have to have your restraint in the sense faculties where you are putting your attention. Duplicity is an obstruction to friendships. So. Uh, honesty uh, and being uh, whatever uh, when you are uh, speaking to uh, uh, somebody. So you should be honest uh, with the person. So you should not be duplicitous. So uh, duplicity is a, a thing which kind of is obstruction to friendship. So if you are honest, then uh, it helps in the friendship. Non uh, recitation is obstruction to learning. Now, uh, uh, non recitation is a way of uh, learning at the time of the Buddha. So uh, the at the time of the Buddha, they used to kind of memorize whatever the teaching was there. After memorization, they used to kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, pass on this uh, to uh, the uh, next generation also. So re recitation and uh, uh, memory, development of memory is a kind of a very important factor in uh, being a kind of a uh, good learner. So learning is done by this process of recitation. So anything uh, we are repeating, uh, that uh, repetition kind of uh, kind of helps us in uh, remembering. But it is also uh, something where I distinguish between chanting and recitation or recollection. Uh, some uh, some uh, of the monks used to use this word recollection. So uh, like itipaso is a very important uh, factor in uh, uh, for lay person to uh, attain um, uh, 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 that is uh, sotapanna, but that uh, itipiso, uh, which are the good qualities of the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha, is something where you have to uh, read with meaning or understanding uh, by uh, recollecting those factors and not chanting. Chanting is something which can happen automatically in our mind. So that is something I, I kind of distinguish that uh, you should not kind of uh, chant anything like a Metta Sutta. Uh, there are a lot of people who uh, chant every day, but they are not uh, kind of implementing that kind of a feeling of Metta in their daily life. So that is something which one uh, should understand about learning something or uh, uh, distinguishing between chanting and recitation. Unwillingness to listen and not asking questions are obstruction to wisdom. So this is the one thing which Bhante Vimalramsi also kind of repeats uh, again and again that uh, one uh, who does not ask questions will not be able to develop their wisdom. And this also helps in our future lives also. Buddha in one of the suttas in Majjhimanika mentions that if somebody is not asking questions, then in the next life he may not be so bright. 
so asking questions is one uh, aspect and then the other aspect thing is listening so you have to listen when certain uh, teachings are being given then uh, giving ear which is uh, mentioned as giving ear uh, listening to what is said is very important in gaining wisdom not applying oneself and lack of reflection are obstruction to good qualities not applying my uh, and uh, not applying oneself and lack of reflection so one thing is uh, applying yourself is uh, putting in your efforts but also reflection in what you have done uh, what you have done in the past or what you have done uh, just now you have to kind of recollect those things and reflect on those qualities that what are my actions are there how how can i improve on those actions and uh, this is kind of a universal teaching uh, in uh, many of the self help books also which i have read in the past that uh, they say that it is one of the most important factors in the success of uh, people who kind of take a time a period like uh, every day in the evening one hour they go into a room and uh, think about the uh, activities which has happened in the day and they put it in a, on a piece of paper and say how could i have improved it if you he uh, he finds out he uh, woke up uh, later than he had uh, planned uh, he had uh, had an argument with somebody he had uh, missed an appointment then he would say that okay these are the things which i have done uh, wrong uh, i have to improve then these are the things which uh, went uh, well and i will kind of continue doing that so this kind of ref uh, that reflection of our uh, actions is one of the uh, uh, factors which are uh, good for uh, developing good qualities wrong practice is an ob obstruction to the heavens so wrong practice is the uh, the eightfold path uh, which is there uh, not following that eightfold path not uh, putting your attention uh, where it is uh, required not using the right effort that is the uh, practice of the uh, wrong practice these are the 10 other things that are obstruction to those 10 things that are wished for desired agreeable and rarely gained in the world there are 10 other things because that are nutriments for this 10 things that are wished for desired agreeable rarely gained in the world so uh, the buddha is talking about the uh, good qualities one can pursue to enhance or uh, work towards getting this uh, things which are desired diligence and initiative are nutriments for the acquisition of wealth so when when uh, if one is diligent and takes initiative then he can work on uh, uh, gaining wealth adorning and beautifying one's self are nutriments for beauty doing what is beneficial is a nutriment for health so you do what is beneficial like exercise or uh, having uh, correct food A, a correct portion of food those kind of a uh, correct uh, uh, beneficial uh, activities which you do then that would be a nutriment for health good friendship is a nutriment for virtuous behavior so if you have uh, virtuous friends who have a good circle of friends for virtuous then it becomes easier for you to become virtuous restraints of the sense faculty is a nutriment for celibacy so uh, how you put your attention where you put your attention how to use the uh, right effort by uh, restraining your sense faculties you can achieve celibacy sincerity is a, a nutriment uh, for fr friendship so one uh, is fr uh, sincere with the people who uh, we, who we are dealing with then we can make friends recitation is a nutriment for learning willingness to listen and ask questions are nutriments for wisdom applying oneself and uh, reflection are nutriments for good qualities right practice is a nutriment uh, for the heavens the right practice is the same eightfold path where uh, we uh, uh, kind of bante uh, women uh, ramsi also says that just by smiling also you can kind of uh, gain the eightfold path like uh, having the right view Uh, of a positive uh, attitude or a smiling mind then you smile with that and then uh, you follow your day with the communication which is there uh, that is uh, you have a, a kind of a communication which is uh, 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 proper and 
uh, which is harmonious and which is joyful. In that same way, he, you can progress and uh, have a, a right practice. And by having a right practice, you will be a, able to gain uh, uh, good destinations. These are the 10 other things that are obstruction to those 10 things that are wished for, desired, agreeable, and rarely gained in the world. There are 10 other things which, will, which are nutriment for this 10 things which are wished for, desired, agreeable, and gained for. So one second. Right practice. These are the 10 uh, other things which are nutriment for this 10 things which are wished for, desired, agreeable, and gained for in the world. So that is the end of the sutta. It's a very kind of a straightforward and a small uh, 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 small sutta, but uh, it is uh, kind of giving a lot of information about the things which are kind of uh, desired and uh, the things uh, when we desired how to uh, get them. The, those are a kind of self-evident. Uh, we believe that they are self-evident, but uh, when you are kind of uh, have a hundreds of choices in this world. And then uh, you have to know what are the uh, correct one. And uh, the Buddha is kind of pointing you towards those correct uh, things which you can uh, focus and uh, to attain. Uh, mostly uh, those uh, factors which are there required uh, comes under our uh, practice of the meditation itself, which is uh, how you put your attention and how you uh, kind of keep your attention there, which is the kind of the factor for right uh, effort or 6R, which we say. So that is uh, something where uh, you can uh, use this uh, uh, teaching which you are giving or the method of meditation to uh, focus on the things which you desire in life and pursue them. So that is the uh, sutta. And uh, I'll open this up for questions. Uh, you can ask uh, questions related to sutta or uh, any other questions also related to meditation or twin. Is there any questions? Yes, <laughs> you. Hello, hello, Bante. Thank you very much for that. Uh, yes, you say, as you say, it's a short sutta, but uh, it's very uh, uh, succinct in what it covers. Um, and I'm very pleased to see uh, the reference to uh, the listening and asking questions. That's very helpful because uh, um, it's, it's so challenging sometimes uh, to encourage people to ask questions, um, either because you know, the, the initial explanation sounds um, uh, well explained, uh, but also I think there's a, a reticence to, to um, uh, reveal something which we feel sometimes may seem a silly question or an unnecessary question or, or the, um, but these questions always get in the way of our practice. Correct. Um, and, uh, and so even, even the silly question that we think of as such um, often is in the mind of other people as well. Um, uh, and so, um, just going, just going through this. Um, I'm just uh, lost the page. Uh, oh yes, here it is. Um, I. Something like um, celibacy seems uh, not relevant to, to daily life, um, but we can, I think we can think of that as the way that um, we're constantly being invited uh, through media and through uh, advertising um, to uh, engage in a, um, in a sensory way. Sensory way, sorry. And, and I think, a, a way of looking at uh, an aspect of celibacy in daily life is possibly to, to begin to be more aware of this um, uh, encouragement that we're having uh, to, to, to engage in this way. Okay. Um, and to be able to step back from that a little bit 
um, and create a pause um, because uh, it's such a it's such a driver in marketing in um, uh, almost in in sort of common culture um, and uh, and and so this idea of restraining the senses is, for me is, is more about uh, bringing more awareness into the senses, Correct. not being driven by, but but, but being more aware. Um, uh, would you would you agree with that? Would that correspond with with what you're saying? Yes. Uh, see, uh, sense uh, perceptions or whatever our uh, sensual uh, uh, faculties are there. They are getting pulled because of uh, the commercial requirements of the, uh, uh, the the industry or the economy. You know. See, uh, when you are watching a, uh, any kind of a, uh, uh, anything on the uh, TV or uh, YouTube or anything, there will be ads which are there. So they are just pulling yourself up, uh, saying that this thing which you uh, will consume, uh, or uh, this thing which you will buy, or uh, this thing which you will experience, will kind of enhance uh, your uh, sense of uh, being or sense of happiness. So those are the things where uh, they are kind of saying that uh, the 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 source of uh, your pleasures is something outside, and when you uh, kind of uh, consume this. Uh, acquire this or experience this, then you will uh, 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 attain happiness. But what uh, we are saying by awareness is that you are being aware of how your senses are uh, actually functioning. So when the awareness is there, you will understand that when, when certain things which are there, uh, which are consumed, can only give you pleasure at the moment of the consumption. But uh, that consumption has a uh, uh, fallacy or the, a shortcoming that is they are in, impermanent when there is impermanent that is the danger in it and when there is a pleasure that is the, uh, the that is the uh, gratification which is there and what the escape is there is the uh, the eightfold path or the six r which we say right effort that is the escape from it why this is an escape when when cert a certain uh, sense uh, desire arises you recognize it you can release it relax re smile and return back to uh, whatever uh, you are doing. So you are not uh, pulled in uh, to towards those kind of sense invitations, which are uh, kind of constantly being bombarded. Uh, so uh, if you go out, you'll see that there are hoardings, the boardings, uh, there are uh, posters, everything is kind of in inviting us uh, and uh, attracting our senses. There are, uh, there are loud uh, kind of announcements are there. Uh, or there are uh, uh, music which is played. So those are the things which are kind of pulled in. So those are the sense faculties which are kind of to be controlled by awareness, as you said. Awareness is there for the gratification, danger, and the escape, which the Buddha uh, talks about a lot. In Samyutta Nikaya, also there are a lot of sutras where uh, he mentions about those things. And then sometimes he mentions in the, in the way of the arising, the disappearance, the gratification, danger, and escape. So the arising and uh, disappearance is that it was not there, it is there now, uh, and it will uh, kind of go away. That is the arising and disappearance. The gratification is whatever the pleasure you derive at that moment of consumption, or the experience which is there, say going to a concert or uh, going to a uh, uh, kind of a theme park or something like that. At that moment, you uh, have that uh, uh, gratification in that uh, thing. Then the danger is that it is always impermanent. So it ends and uh, the escape is the awareness which is there when you recognize and use the right effort. So as you said that this awareness is a way of escaping from uh, the things which are pulling you away because the things which are pulling you away are pulling you away from the concept of that the, whatever happiness is out there and I have to acquire that. But what uh, Buddha is saying that whatever is your experience uh, uh, is uh, the happiness is a default state over here by uh, not uh, kind of uh, uh, putting your attention in a, in a wrong place, you put your attention in the right place and then the happiness is uh, self-generated. So in that sense, uh, you kind of uh, use the awareness as a tool to kind of understand what is uh, happening as in 
the current uh, period or the current reality. And one other thing uh, about questions, I'll, I'll tell you one other thing is that it is about a perception also. See, if I say a word, say lake, somebody who is uh, living in, uh, in a kind of uh, some a place like India, I'll tell you there is a, a West Bengal is there and Tripura, those places, uh, they will have their own small ponds, okay? So and they they, uh, they have a, a, a different uh, kind of perspective on lake, which is there, or a pond which is there. And somebody who lives in uh, some other place, uh, say uh, somebody lives in a, a place in America or in the Great Lakes areas, so he has a, a, another idea of a lake. So that one same word uh, uh, is perceived differently. Like uh, in many of the suttas, one uh, 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 understands he becomes cool. Now, becoming cool is kind of a, a, a pleasurable uh, situation when uh, somebody is there in a hot climate. So he becomes cool is a way of conveying uh, that he is comfortable. But uh, for somebody who lives in a cold climate, becoming cool maybe have a negative connotation. So, uh, so uh, the place which is uh, like a heaven for uh, Tibetans is a warm place. And for uh, mainland uh, in India, the place which is there as heaven is a cold place. So it's a perception which is there of words, which uh, kind of uh, uh, can be, uh, 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 the full meaning is not conveyed. That's the reason asking questions and clarify that, uh, that part. Second uh, benefit of uh, clarification is that uh, when you ask a question, somebody may not even have that uh, percep so perception. Uh, of that question, and they may also benefit from that. So by asking a question, uh, you also benefit others who have uh, are in the group, and they can also gain knowledge. So the, both the ways the question uh, can help. So is there any other questions? <laughs> Thank you, Pandit. So if there are no questions, uh, yeah, Sindhu? Uh, hi, Bhante. Yes. I just want to say something about uh, my experience. Yes. Uh, I have been following uh, you and Sister Kema since uh, six, seven months or one year. Yes. So I have been listening to you on YouTube also. So every time there is a question and answer session, yes, I need to ask something. Then uh, later last Wednesday also, Sister Kema mentioned that uh, if you don't ask the question, every time you sit on sit for a meditation, the same question repeats in your mind. Uh, so that uh, is a good point because I have experienced that for one week, if I don't ask the question, same question keeps on coming in my mind. Correct. I started asking questions. That's good. Point. Yeah, very good. <laughs> you have any questions today? No. <laughs> okay, so we'll keep this uh, brief. Uh, uh, we'll keep uh, updating about Sister Kema also. So uh, she may kind of uh, have a kind of difficult period for her uh, going forward. But uh, we'll all uh, kind of, we, she has a lot of support over there also. And uh, we all can kind of, uh, when next time we sit for meditation, share merits with Sister Kema. So she can uh, kind of uh, share our uh, uh, kind of good wishes and uh, uh, she does not have that difficulty journey ahead okay so we'll uh, if there is no other questions then we'll end the session now okay okay <laughs> we'll share marriage may suffering once be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be may the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief may all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty power, share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. And one last thing, if uh, somebody has any request for any uh, sutta to be covered, then they can send it uh, uh, to us uh, directly or on the uh, uh, WhatsApp group, they can mention that uh, we are interested in this sutta. So we can kind of take them up. Okay. Okay, then thank you everybody for coming.